Well, here she is, the maiden, uh, the maiden trip, the maiden ride on this bike. I mean, I'm completely terrified riding this. I, I don't know if it's uh, going to break down. I don't know what's going to might come loose. I don't know if the engine's going to seize up on me. I'm sort of really, you know, really worried <laughs> about riding this. If I'm honest, I, I've just ridden here from my house. You know, I haven't really done any miles on this at all at all you know and this engine's got to be running so i've got to ride it smoothly the the gearbox seems quite tight you know i don't anyway but this this is it this is the maiden ride on this bike i've got a backpack full of tools because i'm expecting things to come loose and have to tighten stuff so i've got backpacks full of tools i've had a few uh teething troubles with it already you know when i've just driven up and down my drive things have come loose and i've had to tighten stuff but this is, um, yeah, this, this is, yeah, this is a bit different when you've built a bike up from nut and bolt, you know, everything's tight, is, is everything all right, is, is stuff going to fail, now is the engine okay, I mean I've been running a, like a running in, a running in oil in this bike, so I've got a special running in oil, um, with obviously proper additives and stuff, like a mineral oil, I'll flash it on the screen, I can't remember what it's called, but I found it, but, the oil man recommended it at OP Oils, you know, for competition engines, which you can run in on the dyno or on the road. So I've got a special running in oil, which I'm going to change after 100 miles. But this video is just this initial first ride on this bike. And I say, I'm a little bit nervous about this, whether it's going to be okay. After I've done a few miles on it, I'll sort of settle down a little bit, hopefully. But um, yeah, this is it. This is the maiden ride on this bike. I mean, it looks... Oh, I love how it looks. The exhaust isn't finished yet. I've got a hanger to go on here. I've just got the number plate zip tied on the back for now. You know, I'd like a custom pipe. But anyway, you know, we're going to all of that. But this is the maiden voyage on the Hypermotar. The first ride in four years since I took this bike apart. So, uh, I mean, look at it. It looks amazing. We're going to all the stuff about it. But anyway, this is it. First ride on Hypermotar. Fingers crossed. It's not going to seize up. It's not going to fall out. The engine's not going to drop out. Wheels aren't going to fall off. Let's hope. So if you're interested in the hyper, get yourself a cup of tea. This is the big one. This is the ride. Chopsy, roll the intro. Let us start it up again. It starts up perfect now. It doesn't do any of that business where, you know, it automatically turns over. These do. It's running, it's running. I've been told not to leave it idling too long because of course it's, it's air, air and oil cooled. So it doesn't get a lot of circulation with water cooling. So don't leave it idling too long. So I'm gonna jump straight on it and get moving. It's really, really tall. It's really tall because I got that longer shaft, you know, the shaft thing I had. The, the, it's taller than the standard one, so it's really tall. So it feels a little bit, you know, I might have to adjust the ride height a little bit, but it sounds amazing. And one thing I've really noticed, I just, just initially sort of riding here, is it's because it's got a balanced bottom end and the crank's fully balanced. It actually feels surprisingly smooth. Listen to it. The gear change is really heavy. I don't know if I need to play around with the rear sets a bit more, but the gear change is really quite heavy on it. Ooh, oh, it feels so quick steering. I must say, sort of pushing it around, it feels so light. It feels so lightweight, this bike quite hard to I've got really got to pull the gear lever up to change gear I might have to have a play round and adjust I think the gear lever position I, I don't think it's optimal I'm gonna I'm gonna pull over already <laughs> just to check chain tension that sort of stuff oh look seems to be all right seems to be all right let's jump back on I don't want to leave it idling too long keep it cool but I'm I'm, I'm concerned that you know, there's a bit of media left in the engine after we re rebuilt it. You know, just little things like that are playing on my mind a bit with this bike. And, 
you know what, I, I did a, an immediate oil change on it before. You know, while I just warmed it up and changed the oil. But I'm still a little bit worried that, you know, there's something in the engine and there's a lot of question marks in my mind. You know, with, with this bike, whether it's going to be okay. The fuel lights on. Oh, we need petrol. Oh, that was the engine management light. That wasn't fuel light. That was the engine light came on for a second there. Why has the engine light come on and gone out? Oh, I'm not, not going to stray too far from home in case I have to push it home. <laughs> it's quite possible. But it's taken me a long time to get this ready. There, there's been probably 20 hours worth of tinkering. Getting, it took me four hours probably to get the rear sets on and fitted where I wanted them. And you know, the, the hours and hours of, I've spent on this bike just doing the finishing touches. It takes so, so long and it's not finished yet. And I've got the tail to put on yet. I've got a tail tidy. I've got rear indicators to put on. That's the engine light on again. Oh, why's the engine management light on? You don't really want to see that, do you? Uh, I better stop again quickly if we've got engine management light on. Engine management light's on. That's not what I wanted to see. That's not what I wanted to see. Let's just see how hot things are. We're getting in the oil coolers. That is hot. Okay, yeah, it's hot. Just want to make sure you know it's getting oil through that. It's just all, it's all quite concerning. <laughs> That's hot. How hot is this front one? Let's make sure you now the cylinders are both equally warm. You know, to make sure that the oil's pumping around, the head's all right. Yeah, there's just so many. I had a problem here that where this the basket was hitting this outer cover and it's worn. I've got a, the slipper clutch to go, so it doesn't matter too much. But I've worn the coating off of my Oberon. I've had to add this gasket to space that out slightly. I don't know if that was due because we've got a different master cylinder, we've got a different slave cylinder. But it's all a little bit worrying. It's all a little bit uh, concerning <laughs> with this bike. You know, I've got a little bit of like gloopy sort of oil showed in the sight glass, where it hasn't been run for a while, I suppose. I don't know, it's all a little bit worrying. Let's turn it on and off and see if that engine management light goes out. Yeah, it's gone out now. It's not leaking anything, there's nothing obviously wrong. The engine light has gone out now, I've turned it on and off. Let's go again. Obviously the spec of this, it's got Bigelar Performance heads which have been ported by Twan at Bigelar Performance. It's got the Ducati racing cams in it as well and that balanced bottom end. So I've sort of been told, I will get this mapped, I will take this down to see Chris at CGS Racing, who's part of Luigi Moto, like, you know, one of the special, biggest Ducati specialists, this sort of age of Ducati specialists in the UK. So I'm going to take it down to Chris for, for a mapping, because of course we've got the, we've got the big pod filters on here as well, and the full system. So yeah, it's got to be mapped, but obviously I want to run it in first, it's got to be running first before it's mapped. Speedo works, that's, that's a bonus. Front brakes are getting a bit better. Rear brake. Yeah, that needs. Well, the rear brake's just gone completely now. <laughs> the rear brake's just gone completely. Oh, Jesus, what's wrong with the rear brake? It's just stopped working completely. <laughs> Let's check that out. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, 
the shafts. Got, this was another problem I had, getting these rear sets right. This, I've got the Hell rear master, but this, this shaft here, I screwed it on, but obviously not enough. I had to, had to loosen it right off to, uh, to get it, uh, to get the lever in the right position, and now it's popped off. So I mean, it's little things. I need a longer shaft, longer threaded piece on the rear master cylinder, so I have to go without a rear brake for the moment. So the rear brake needs attention. First thing on the snagging list, the new snagging list, snagging list mark two. Apart from that, things look all right. So let's carry on. Staying off the rear brake. Yeah, it's quite heavy, the clutch. You know, despite having an Oberon slave cylinder, I think it's better than it was. Gear lever definitely needs a bit of tweaking as well. It needs to come down a little bit, I think, on its position. The rear is a bit high. I'm sort of being pushed forward a little bit. But I quite like the look of it of a big high rear. So we'll see how it handles when I get... I've got that rubbish rear tyre on at the moment. We'll see how it handles with the proper... the proper rear tyre. Well, the engine management lights stayed out anyway. For the moment, so that's good. Mirrors are here, look, I've got mirrors. If they're any good or not, I don't know. I don't like these mirrors, they're, they're a bit rubbish. They cost a fortune, these mirrors, because they always break, and obviously you can't buy them anymore. These mirrors go for hundreds and hundreds of pounds if you've got the standard mirrors on these bikes. So even though you know, a set of bar ends might be more practical. A set of, sort of aftermarket bar ends. These are like the the proper mirrors, the proper Ducati mirrors. So I'd like to keep those on. But actually, that's pretty good. I can see quite nicely behind me there. That's not bad at all. But yeah, Ducati Hypermotard back on the road. Oh, don't get in the, don't get it dirty. Who's washing their car? It's actually very nice. It's actually very nice to ride. Apart from I'm um, tipped forward slightly. It's really nice. The seat is reasonably comfortable. Yes, it's really nice. Let's pull in here. Front brakes. Let's give them a decent pull. Bed them discs in. Let's have another check. Neutral. No, neutral's there somewhere. There it is. Beastly. warm hot hot very hot the engine I guess with the running in oil it might run a bit hotter I don't know yeah, it's, it's very hot not binding or anything yeah this is the same temperature I'm not binding or anything like that all the lines are all right, not catching anywhere. I've had to put like the pressure switches for the brake lines. So the brake lines have like the pressure switches rather than the mechanical switches on the levers. They've got the, uh, I've soldered in the, the hydraulic switches. Same with the front brake, same with the clutch as well. Check the front sprocket's tight. I keep, I'm terrified that's going to come undone for some reason. Right, let's go again. I think we go back where we came. Just in case it breaks down. I mean, I don't know what sort of power this will make when I take it to be dynoed. People with similar specs have said I could expect about 110 horsepower, they reckon. I think it's a 90 standard, 90 horsepower standard. You know, with the mods I've done, Tuan said I'll get like 10% more power throughout the whole rev range with the porting. I wonder if there's any sort of you know, engine temperature warning if things get too hot. There's an oil, oil pressure. So it's monitoring your oil pressure, and your oil pressure's all right. <laughs> uh, the more miles I do, the more, the more I relax. Yeah, the more miles I'm doing, the more I can relax it. It's okay, but I'm not going to be fully convinced until I think it's fully run in. Mm. So far, so good. Don't speak too soon. Touch wood. Four years in the making. 
four years in the making. It's like I've got a new bike. This is why people say, you're going to buy a new Super Duty, you're going to buy a new this, that and the other. I said, there's no point buying a new bike because I've got a new bike. You know, I knew when this would be done, it would be like a new bike. Because, you know, it is a new bike. I haven't had this bike for four years. You know, I completely forgot about this bike. You know, as a motorcycle, it was always just a project and a load of boxes. You know, it wasn't a motorcycle. Now I've got another motorcycle. But I do like the fact that this is a very simple machine. You know, no electronics. Not even any ABS. You know, 100% analog of the engine warning lights on again. It came on here last time around here, didn't it? I love that, that Ducati clutch rattle. Let's turn it on and off again because I have to turn it off to fix that alarm anyway. Oh, my boot's rubbing on the exhaust a little bit. Look, I'd like to get a custom exhaust. As I say, this exhaust is too long, really. You know, I've cut it down, but then I don't want to mess up the performance. You know, it's that long for a reason. What's the oil level doing? Yeah, the oil level, look. Well, because it's hot, it's above the upper mark. But it was level when it was all cold. Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know what I'm going to do about graphics and stuff. I might... I'm quite enjoying it just being carbon for the minute, if I'm absolutely honest. I'm liking it sort of stealthy black carbon. But I may put some sort of decals on it or stickers on it. I quite like the SP version. It has a little sticker, sort of two stripes that come across here and a little bit around here. and You know, a little piece that goes on. So I may just do some subtle sort of factory Ducati stickers for it. But I'm, I'm liking, I think it just looks cool. There's also meant to be some bits that go on here, some more carbon bits that go around the back of this subframe. But I'm actually quite liking, you know, the, uh, the sort of naked tail. We tie the wheels, has the wheel tight? Yeah. <laughs> the wheel hasn't fallen off yet. Give it time. Shall we go a bit further? Shall we risk going a little bit further afield? If I've got to push it back from here, I'm in trouble anyway. End your morning lights on again. Why is that coming on? Maybe I should go home and uh, see why that's coming on if I can. Probably just due to a sensor. <laughs> it could be anything. Do another stop up here. Should it cool down completely now? Get a pint. Get a shandy. Let it cool down. A celebratory shandy for getting this far. I think I might get a celebratory shandy. How very English. Nice shandy. Am I watching a game of cricket? Very English indeed. But uh, there she is lurking over here. Behind the grills. Keep clear. She's a beauty. Thought I'd just stop, have my celebratory shandy, hopefully it's not premature, <laughs> and just let it cool down a little bit and then go out again in case, and see if the engine light doesn't come on until the bike starts to really warm up. So I don't know why the engine light's coming on, that's a little bit worrying, but it could be a whole host of factors, you know, it could be anything from a, a mere sensor. Oh. Yeah, it could be anything from just a mere sensor to something very serious so, so who knows so we're gonna see how we go so I've had my pint very nice it was too <laughs> and everything's cooled down a little bit now I've probably been here about half hour or so so things are starting to cool well, it's still you know warm to the touch but it's all starting to cool down a little bit so um I phoned up Steve at Hell Performance he's sending me a longer um jobby for the master cylinder because they do a longer rod not the rod, but the, 
the bit that goes on the bottom, that threads onto the bottom of the rod, so I can get the brake lever. That's the trouble though, the brake lever was too low because that seemed a bit short. So those rear sets have been a been a mission to be honest to get right. But he's sending me that, so that will sort the rear brake out, and providing it doesn't blow up <laughs> or fall to pieces, we should be good to go. So let's push it out of here. Oh, it's so lightweight. I love the fact it's so lightweight. I don't know why it feels so light. I mean, these aren't particularly light bikes. I think they're, I think about 180 kilos, these. And obviously mine's probably a little bit lighter because, I don't know really, titanium bits. Obviously the full system, there's no cat and all that with it. There we go. So I stand up. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Okay, what's going on? We've not got nothing. Ah, oh, what's going on? This is a worry. So I stand is up. Oh dear. I may have been congratulating myself prematurely. Why is it not starting? Start motor. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 